Hi, this is Scott Fresner, developer of TCEPs and Fast Films. I'd like to give you a quick overview of a routine called index color separations. This is a great routine because it can be used on a variety of designs and it's very popular. Indexing is unique in that unlike simulated process and real process color where the final seps are half toned, with indexing when you're done separating, your final separations are nothing but little tiny square dots. If I zoom in on this, you'll see what I mean. It's little dots, and they're all the same, little squares. They're all the same size. This is oftenly, often called a square dot type of separation. What makes this unique is that when you start indexing and pulling colors and putting them all together, it's like a puzzle. So the dots print next to the dots. So the designs print really nicely and very cleanly. Uh, there is the downside to it, but for right now, let's just talk about the upside. One quirky thing about Photoshop is sometimes it'll, it'll display an index separation pretty grainy. And that is really the display problem of Photoshop. If you zoom out one more notch, it cleans things up. This is only the display in Photoshop because you're going to be getting dot gain and your dots are going to grow a little bit and it's going to be pretty cool. So with index separations, the good news is they're easy to print, they're easy to separate, and because you're actually going to pull colors from your design and not let the program determine the colors like simulated process, with indexing in this design, like I would pull the red, the blue, the yellows, and I would pull the actual specific color from my my design and pick it. And that means if I'm trying to do Pantone matches, very critical images, indexing works very well because it will let you nail the color because you're actually going to select the exact color from your design. So indexing works well there. The other thing is because it's a pixel and it's not a half tone dot, there's no array on your screen. So one of the claims to fame of indexing is there's no array. It's just little tiny square dots. Now these dots are pretty small too. So they're easy to print, no array. Indexing is widely used for a lot of your surfing designs because not only will it make a design photorealistic, but it will also make a design very high contrast. As an example, I could take this airshow image that is kind of cartoony, and I could pick only three colors, and it may not look like the original when I'm done, but it could be a real gr kind of a gritty, high contrast kind of a look. Now, the downside of indexing is indexing likes a lot of colors. If you have to be... If you have to really nail the original and come really close to it, it likes a lot of colors. As an example, if I had to exactly nail this image, I might have to pick a red, a dark red, a dark blue, a medium blue, a light blue, a yellow, an orange, a green. To really nail the design, I may have to print a lot of colors. A lot of times you'll see index designs in stores, and we've, done, we've gotten samples from customers of Harry Potter and licensed merchandise, and some of them are 10 and 12 color prints. And because indexing likes a lot of colors if you're trying to match the original exactly. The other downside is that when you're done indexing, you're done. This is not a halftone dot that you can then tweak in Photoshop. In Photoshop, when you're done separating, these pixels are set. This file, this, this separation is now a bitmap, and you are done playing with it. You can't lighten it, darken it, sharpen it. You can erase pixels, but the tone curve doesn't work. You can't, light, you can't take and uh, 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 apply any kind of other effect to it because you are done separating. That means with indexing, when you're done separating and you go to press, uh, you can't come back and just tweak a color. If you want to come back on this design and maybe say, I want more blue and come back and tweak the blue, you can't do that. You have to come back to the original art, boost the blue in the original, and re-separate the entire design. Because remember, it's like a puzzle, and you screw the puzzle up. There's no way to come back and just boost it. Now, we have built into the index routine a hybrid routine because of the problem of you can't tweak the seps when you're done and a lot of times the underbase is the one that needs to be tweaked. As an example, here we have the underbase on a black shirt and I think the underbase could be a little stronger under the blue. Now in a simulated process routine I could take a tone curve to this but because this is indexed I am stuck. And so the hybrid routine allows you to do a half-toned underbase that you can then tweak with a tone curve and indexing for the colors because indexing does give you fairly bright prints. So this is index color. Here's the quirky thing you must check before you run a routine. You must look to see what the resolution is. The resolution of the file is the size of the final pixel and the file needs to be at final size because again you cannot upsample or downsample this file in size when you're done. When you're done it is done and the resolution needs to be from 175 to 225 dpi. Now 225 is pretty fine. That is a small pixel about a, like a 5% dot at 65 lines so it's pretty hard to burn on screens. 
200 is a good resolution. 180 is okay. If you want a real grainy look to your design and really a pixelated look, then make the design final size at 72 DPI or 50 DPI. But you must check the file resolution. If it is not the right resolution, your design will not be as detailed as it can be. So you always check the file resolution. It must be at 200 DPI approximately at the final physical size. That's a quick overview of the index color routine.